Just last week, we showed you a hand where Jason Kuhn lost what was at the time the biggest pot in televised poker history. That's got us smart a little bit, but he's still at it in the same cash game. He's rebought. It's very soon after, and he's about to play another very interesting pot. And huge pot. And when we say very soon, we mean like four hands later. Yeah. This is still from the 2,000, 4,000 euro blind cash game on the Triton Super High Roller game, or whatever it's called. And Kuhn is under the gun here, and he's going to be up against the guy who won the one drop, the one million dollar buy-in one drop that was that took place not at the World Series, the amateur only one for like twelve million dollars just last year. Elton Sang. Yeah, he is an amateur, but he beat all the other amateurs and now is number one on China's all-time money list. So that's a pretty good accomplishment for him. Yeah. Also making an appearance in this hand, Tom Dewan. Hey. He's still alive. That's yes. pretty cool, isn't He's it? He's living. It's pretty yeah. exciting. And this hand does get huge, which is probably why it was suggested by all of these people. If you have a suggestion for the breakdown, tweet at us, include a YouTube link. Please do those things. Now, before we get to the hand, we have to thank our sponsor, Nitrogen Sports Poker, who at the end of every single month hosts a fantastic tournament that you really should be a part of. Yeah, it's a crazy tournament because they guarantee 1,000 buy-ins worth of money. And guess what? We've gotten 73 at most. So... You're getting a lot of money for that. You're getting 14 to 1 on your money. You can be the worst player in the world, and it's plus EV to register for this tournament. It's not even an expensive buy-in. It's less than a dollar to play. There's almost $1,000 in the prize pool, depending on the price of Bitcoin at any time. But you got to use the link in the description when you sign up for Nitrogen to be able to be, at, be eligible excuse me, to play this tournament. Well, have enough gimbal in the pocket. Right? What they do, you know? All right, so yeah, Jason Kuhn's going to raise first one in. It's not a straddle pot. I mean, there are at least three stacks to the table. What's that? Huh? What'd you say? It doesn't feel that true. I guess it depends on how much you have in crypto. Set hunting! <laughs> I thought you're not. You know, Paul says he's set hunting right now. with 8 6 suited. Trying to put some mind games on his opponents. I had like 33% in my portfolio. Now I have less. There are a lot of people. Coon flops a straight flush draw. Six, nine is a straight. Looking for the nine of clubs or the, I mean the nine of hearts or the four of hearts right now. Love to see a straight flush on in our big cash game. Uh, but Tom Dwan's got the best hand. He's gonna bet top pair, ten kicker. Elton, he's got bottom pair of a nut flush draw right now. He's actually going to make the call, or is he check raising? He's going to make the call of bottom pair. He's very suspicious of Tom. They've got a lot of history, but Jason Kuhn actually might check raise here. He can put a lot of pressure on these type of hands. Yeah, he, he's going to raise to 100,000. I mean, he's stuck about 800,000 euros, so. I can see why he wants to raise and just put a lot of pressure. I wonder if Tom Duong can read into this and maybe call a flop check raise and kind of see what happens on the turn. But I think he's going to let it go. The way he's grabbing his cards. Actually, no, he might call. He's Tom's thinking about what happened previously. Kuhn bluffed off a lot of his chips. Would Kuhn actually try and bluff off more chips? What happened on the flop? So he's going to let it go. And Elton probably got a fold bottom pair. Maybe Elton's going to call here. With just bottom pair. No, he re raises to 324,000. This is a. Mm. A weird play. Wow. Jason Kundo, I mean, he has a very good hand. Just six high, but 
He just got 55% chance to win. I think he's just going to call and see what happens on a turn. He doesn't think Elton will ever fold to a shot, but he actually would. Often, the river is the reason for a breakdown, right, Jonathan? We yes. just are talking about the river because it's crazy. But let's talk about something else crazy, which is this freaking flop. What just happened? I, I can't talk. You go. Okay, <laughs> no problem. Well, lots of wacky things happen. Number one, Jason Kuhn decides to check raise rather than just continue, which would be a normal thing would just be to bet this flop. It's an ace high flop. That's normally a flop you'd bet. Kuhn decides to check raise instead, which you think he's going to do with a fairly polarized range here, right? Like a lot of, maybe polarized is the wrong word, but like sets, like mm -hmm. very strong hands and very strong draws mostly and not a whole lot else. Well, let's talk about why he might decide to do this rather than just a normal C bet. Now, Elden and Paul Fu are both in this hand, and these guys are both huge whales. And yeah. they might be willing to call a lot more frequently than Jason Kuhn would like when he has six high here. So he's trying to garner some more fold equity by checking and hoping somebody bets so he can check raise. He believes that's a better way that he can win the hand with six high right now some of the time. So, so that fold equity is really nice. Now some weird stuff happens along the way too. Tom Dwan very understandably bets top pair when it checks to him on the button. Elton Sang decides to flat, which is weird, but whatever. It's not crazy. It's pretty bad. It, but it's not the end of the world to do that from the small blind with the back door not flush dry, at least, on top of your pair. Um, and then this is where things get a little bit interesting. So Kuhn decides to check raise to 100K. Yeah. That's reasonable, especially with the hand he has. Look how well it works, too. He gets the best hand out of there. Gets Tom Dwan out of there anyway, who's going to play really well against It's a him. reasonable fold, obviously. Of course it is. Tom Dwan's now like, well, what can I beat? Also, Elton called behind me. Am I going to be a hero for, my, for this whole stack? Because that's what we're looking at already, too. Let's talk about something unreasonable, Jonathan. Yes, here it comes. Elton. <laughs> Elton, yes. what are you doing? This he, is like Crocodile Rock, Elton. Nobody wants to hear that. I like Crocodile Rock. I will defend that to the <laughs> end of time. Also, um, what's the other one that's good that I like to defend? You like oh, Benny, Benny and the, and the Jets. Jets. Benny and the Jets is a good song. Two garbage songs. It's unbelievable. Let's get back Rocket to Rocket Man is great. Yeah. Your song is great. Of course. Yeah. Handle in the wind. <laughs> 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 but, but, okay. So, Elton decides to make this big raise now, and clearly he does not believe Kuhn is going to play a set like this, right? Otherwise, this is crazy. I mean, it's crazy anyway, Jonathan. Yeah, of course it is. Elton, honestly, in my opinion, shouldn't have called Dwan's bet in the first place <laughs> with two players behind him and bottom pair. Sure, he has a backdoor flush draw. whoop de doo Then he gets check raised to 100K by a very capable player with the under-the-gun range, and he's like, you know what, 324. Good luck, Jason Kuhn. So, yeah, what is Elton trying to do here? Is it possible he has a bit of a read on Kuhn? No. It's possible. Okay. Elton, by the way, did win the last year's uh, million dollar one drop that did not take place at the World Series and was only for amateurs, but yeah. he did win it for some outrageous Which amount of money. Which made him number one on China's all time money list. Yeah. So, so I mean, so it's not. So we're not saying he has zero game. If he in any way thinks Kuhn is uncomfortable, maybe he picks up on that and thinks, well, I can just push this guy around. Turns out he's right. Kuhn does have six high. However. Look at this incredible spot that Kuhn has set up for himself now. If he wants, he can shove, and only he can really have the nuts. Right. I mean, Elton maybe will play a set like this sometimes, I guess, but it's a very strange way to play a set in a four-way pot on the super wet board, so it feels unusual. Now, Kuhn must believe that Elton has some very strong hands in his range yes. here, or else Kuhn would certainly shove with his six high, because if Elton has a set, it might be hard to get paid if the flush card comes in. At the same point, Elton might not have it, and that would be great because we get to win this huge pot right now. But Kuhn decides just to call, which is a bit curious to us. I mean, it's set up so well in terms of the sizing and all that. Maybe he picks up on that and thinks something like, Elton really wants me to shove here. And he's got a set of eights, and he's never folding. And I should not I should not fall into that trap where I don't have as much equity as I would against even two pair, You know, where, the board, where any board pairing is going to kill me now and I'll be drawing dead. Yeah, I guess. I guess. That's I don't all I know. got. I think I slightly prefer a shove here for Jason. Me Kuhn. too. Me too. But the real thing is, like, Elton's just nuts, right? <laughs> this guy's just going crazy. I mean, you can decide Jason Kuhn doesn't have it because he check raised, but we have a lot better spots than this to three bet the flop for 324K, right? Like, we don't have to choose this spot. No question. I mean, also, looking again at Jason Kuhn's decision to not shove, their hands out might play like this, like 7-8, for example, which is going to fold to a shove. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Like, 7-8 cannot call. A7 hates its life and probably folds. Right. I don't know if pocket 7's folds. I don't think pocket 8's is folding. Um, but both of those are reasonably losing also because, because as I said before, Kuhn's really the only guy who can have pocket aces, thus the nuts, and he really might play it just like this. Nonetheless, we're going to the turn with Kuhn with 6 high. Try and decide what Kuhn has. 
Turns the queen. Elton has the nut flush draw of his pair of sevens. 736,000 in here. Now, Elton was pretty much giving up, but on this card, he actually might shove. Elton's trying to represent a set or two, like ace eight or ace seven right now. So he's gonna bet. He's gonna bet a lot. He's just gonna shove them all in. <laughs> okay, he shoved in. Three hundred and ninety thousand. He's got five hundred forty thousand behind. A half pot bet. Jason Coon's got so many outs, but he's only got thirty percent now. Jason Coon's got position, so he technically can call. I would never shove in Jason Coon's spot because he has no fold equity. So he should uh, only call like, with position. Jason Kuhn already down like 800k right today. He can get all his money back in his hand, or he can lose a million euros, possibly more, because I think they were deeper. He makes the call. There's not very many chips no. remaining. No. Elton. Uh, 1.5 million. This pot could be bigger than the last it. pot we just saw. Rivers of four. Jason Kuhn makes the nut uh, straight. I was more afraid that he was just fucking cheating, but I don't think that's the case either. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't see how he could also be cheating. That's not the there's 1.5 million in there. Oh, yeah, okay. That's the way it looks. Uh, I'm sure. I think it's fine. I don't think it's losing any. Jason Kuhn is so relieved to see the four. Elton trying to decide if he can make a bluff. Yeah, mine's nowhere near that. You know, I wasn't like that close. I was, I was five steps away. You were like, <laughs> your foot was in the air. Trying to decide if he can shove here. I was like, what do you mean? Just a pair of sevens. That's like a thing. I, I had the same kind of thing, but further away. What do you mean? I, if I lose this, I'm dead. What do you mean? Hold on. Jason Kuhn oh, just praying for so Elton so to shove. So, so. A lot. Slow. Yeah. Should it be slow, but. We should play, we should play with a shot for after that. It's always fast. 30 seconds. Elton realizes. Kuhn only has a third of the I mean, pot like, remaining. So he checks, yeah, he yeah, gives up. Uh, Jason Kuhn's gonna the shove. Close to the player I, played. Max? I wonder okay, if Elton will like, consider a hero call. If Jason Kuhn can have 6 5 of hearts, then that means he could have. 10 9 of hearts as well, right? So, technically, Jason, I mean, Elton does beat a couple hands. I guess King 10 of hearts and Jack 10 of hearts occasionally. But there's so much, so many chips in there. Two million in the middle. Everyone's a bit silent now because of how big this pot is. Yeah, I saw. At least I say nothing. If you slow, I like to say something. Because in my head, it's, it's a very The Alton trying to decide what hands he can beat. 10 9 of hearts, the most likely hand he can beat. But if he has 10 9 hearts, his opponent can also have 6 of 5 hearts, which is what's ha okay. what he's up against. Huh? It's very few hands he actually beats uh, here. I wouldn't say good. I, 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 I didn't guess even play for like 10 9 of hearts months. and King 10 of hearts. Yeah, Jack 10 of hearts. If, that's assuming they played the hand this way as well. I mean, he really wants to make a hero call, a pair of sevens. But it won't be, it won't be good. Because if Jason Kuhn had a, 
hand like king, queen of hearts, he'd probably just check it back because usually he's up against two hearts himself. So nice fold. Oh, Can't on, show the bluff. bluff. Well, that worked out fabulously well for Jason Kuhn. He gets to win what is now considered the biggest pot in TV poker history, even though we don't really agree with it because no. the bet wasn't called. It's kind of like a 1.5 million pot instead of a 2 million pot. Whatever. That doesn't matter. Jason Kuhn wins because he gets there. He makes the nuts. What a great feeling for Jason having just lost the biggest pot in TV poker history in the same orbit, by the way, <laughs> which is crazy. But let's talk yeah. about this turn play, particularly from Elton, who picks up the nut flush drop. Yeah, this is a weird spot, right? So as Elton, you know in your mind, once you get called by Kuhn, you're probably like, well, I'm shutting down a lot here, yeah. right? Like, the guy called, he's got a good hand. Like, what's the worst hand he has now? Like, ace-king? And would he even play ace-king like this? Maybe he has better than ace-king. It's not a great spot. Um, but now we pick up the nut flush draw also, and we're suddenly got to feel a little more committed to this pot, right? Like, suddenly we don't want, like, we don't want to check fold. No. And, but we don't really want to check call either, because if we check, Kuhn could reasonably shove or bet so much that actually we can't really call, even though we have a pair in the nut flush draw. It's not going to be good enough. The good news is we have the initiative, and the stacks line up pretty well that we can make a very clear committing bet here. Yep. We can bet something like 500, 550,000, something like that, and Kuhn is just going to have to fold most of his range. And if he moves in, it's a very easy call with our king seven of exactly, diamonds. Exactly, which is what we, want, what we would want to price ourselves into this call, rather than price ourselves into what right now would be a fold if we get right. shoved down, which is the biggest disaster Yeah, this all. is a real problem when we have a pair and the nut flush draw that came in as Elden. We bet 390 into this over 700k pot. Now if Kuhn were to shove 500k to win 1.5 million, not which good is not good enough. It's just plain, or two million, excuse me. Still not good enough. No. Yeah, it's just not a good enough price, even though we have such a strong hand, which is why we want to bet more. So we either price ourselves in, or by the way, price Jason Kuhn out. Because Jason Kuhn's exact hand right now against Elton's range, which we went into depth on our podcast and thought it might include some ace-x of hearts, which are the disaster hands for Kuhn, but it also includes sets in two pairs. And some hands like this that Elton just randomly shows up with. Mm -hmm. And against that range, Jason Kuhn is supposed to call with his hand. Now, is it really true we'd be... 500 to win 2 million? Because that's pretty good. It's actually close then, at least, if we're Elton. It's still not good enough, though, mainly because the range that Kuhn would then be shoving with is so crazy strong. As we see, he doesn't shove six high here. Right. I mean, he right. has two pair or better, and usually not even two usually pair. Usually a set, right? Yeah. Usually, usually it's probably top set. Right. Or, or a middle set. And not getting the right price against and that. The, and we're getting, yeah, we're not, because then our pair, anytime we improve without making a flush, it's no good. And some of our flushes aren't good either. We only have seven outs to improve now. It's clearly not good enough. Right. It's clearly not good enough. And it's not good enough to get Jason Kuhn to fold this hand. And it's mathematically correct for Kuhn to call. Now, it sucks as Jason Kuhn, you're sitting there thinking, okay, I'm putting about 400,000 euros in the pot with six high because it's mathematically correct. I wish this guy just blew me off the pot right now. Mm. This sucks. This is a nice house in a lot of nice cities that I'm just putting in this pot that I'm usually not going to see. But guess what? He gets to see it. Yes, exactly. And he sort of is ultimately forced to call here and hope he improves. I got to believe the, the, it's interesting from Jason Kuhn's point of view too, right? Where so Elton on the river does check, yeah. right? And I got to believe he's checking anything that doesn't strongly improve him, which is, I guess everything improves him, right? Yeah. A king, a seven, or a diamond, he might just shove. Mm -hmm. Everything else he's going to check and give up. And I think Kuhn is probably, if there's a check, going to feel obligated to move in, hoping against hope that, that Elton basically has a flush draw. Like, yeah. like Kuhn does, or a straight draw, or something like Maybe. that. And, or we'll just find a fold with a weaker hand because we have six high. I think Kuhn's going to feel obligated to move in because it's going to be basically the worst possible hand he can ever have in this it situation. It would have worked out if the deuce of clubs came off and Kuhn did that. It, Elden would have folded. Wouldn't that have been amazing? Yeah. Instead, of, instead it's a, the offsuit four. Kuhn makes the nuts. That's pretty good, too. Boy, all Jason Kuhn wants to do is play two million euro pots, apparently, in Sounds this cash game. Sounds scary to me. It sounds a little scary. It's a, it is a little scary. What did you guys think about all the different decisions in this hand? What do you think about Elton saying all his flop, turn, I guess river decisions a little bit more straightforward for him, although he could decide just to jam there, too. What do you think about those decisions? What do you think about Kuhn deciding to check raise the flop, not go with it, though, not go with it on the turn, just call in those spots, and of course he's going to shove the river. Let us know in the comments what you think about those decisions and our reactions to them. We look forward to seeing what you have to say. Of course, I mentioned last week's breakdown, and we have to point to that one because it was Jason Kuhn in this very same orbit in an entirely huge pot again, so you got to check that out. Right yeah, there. he Check plays what is truly the biggest game, a pot in cash game history against Kane Callis. Yeah. Really worth watching. Interesting, cool hand for sure. If you want to know how we came to all of our decisions about this hand and really all the different hands that we ever do on the show, you got to check out our podcast, The Breakdown Presented by the Poker Guys. 
That's where we spent a good 45, 50 minutes just talking about this hand against Elton saying that Jason Kuhn played, all the decisions everyone made, we like him or not, and really delving deep and trying to decide, is this a good play or not, on each of the different plays. Check it out, your favorite podcast app. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel.